I'm Mr. Harone, the country director for Cambridge International. I'll be joining Pine Hills International School Forum to speak on the latest updates on Cambridge and international school topics. We'll come with your Q&A. We'll see you on the 10th of July, 2020. Thank you. to all. We are about to start our session for today. Before we begin, let us go through the rules and regulations for this session. Please turn on your video during the talk. The host will mute your microphone during, during the talk until the session and answer session is over. No questions are allowed during the presentation. The chat box will be enabled five minutes before the Q&A session. The share screen feature will be disabled during the session, except for the speaker. Today's very special speaker is known for his achievements and being one of the longest standing country directors at Cambridge International, Mr. Ng has a wealth of experience in education for about 40 years making him a perfect representative for the Cambridge International. Without further ado, let us all welcome our honourable guest, Mr. Ng, to talk about navigating the education pathway for Cambridge IGCSE students. Let us all welcome him. Right, good afternoon, everyone. A warm welcome to a dear friend, Mr. Ng. His experience precedes him. Mr. Ng is the go-to person when it comes to CAIE. He's always very helpful and will clarify any doubts which we as educators may have. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to have you join us, Pine Hills International School, this afternoon on our Zoom platform, Mr. Ng. Mr. Ng will give us an insight on recent developments in the education field in this time of uncertainty. So without any more delay, I would love to pass the platform on to Mr. Ng. Hi, Doni. Yes. And Eunice, can you hear me? We can hear you. Uh, you and need to be focused. Someone needs to focus you on. I can't see you. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> Hold okay. on. We need, to put you, we need to put you on the spotlight. Okay. There we go. Yes, Mr. Ng. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Eunice uh, and, and uh, Noni, thank you. And also uh, many thanks to colleagues here. Who uh, are tuning into this session today? As always, yeah, uh, we hope that it will be a good session. I always like to think of this, this session as a caring and sharing session. We'll speak about maybe like 20, 30 minutes, and then I'll stop for more for questions here. Yeah? And I think it's important that I give you more opportunity to post questions or things that which are at the back of your mind which you may like further clarification. I wouldn't pretend that I know every answer or be able to answer every question, 
I will share with you uh, what what I what what I know. Yeah. So as I I, I re-emphasize here, it's a caring and sharing session. Yeah. So with that, I will I will go on. I've got quite a number of slides. It's easier to to present the slides here. If that's okay, yeah. Noni and Eunice, yeah, I'll go to the share screen. Is it okay? Yes. Yes. Uh, please help me. We cannot see my slides. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right oh. now you can share. Yes. Okay, thank you. So, uh, okay. So I I click the share screen. I put share. Choose your screen. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I have to open up first. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. yes correct. Okay. Hang on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Okay, I open up my my slides. Uh, okay, can you see the slides, you Eunice? Not yet. Not yeah. yet. Uh, no, no, oh. we can't see yet, Mister. Oh, okay. Actually, I've opened up. Yeah, hang on. Yeah. Uh, okay, you have to click on the screen that you are about to share. Oh, okay. First, the green button, share screen, and then the specific screen that you need to share. Oh, okay. Hang on. Okay. Yeah. Um, I escape. Can now you see we can it now? See yes, yes, okay, we can. okay, yeah. Every platform is different, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so we keep zooming in and out of uh, different platforms. Yeah. So you can see it now. Yes, we can see it here. Yeah. Okay. Show. Okay, what I'm going to talk on a bit, the, what they call the, the education pathway for IGCSE students. So, if we look at the first screen here, this is the Cambridge Park, we have called it. So, it's a very structured curriculum, we call it a curriculum continuum. So, it has a primary, followed by lower secondary, upper secondary or IGCSE and A levels here. Yeah? The wording is a bit small, but i just quickly read to you all. The Cambridge Primary is for 5 to 11 years old and we have English, Maths and Science yeah? and ICT plus Global Perspectives, the same subject for lower secondary and then we move to IGCSE, we have for 75 or 76 subjects followed by A-levels yeah? where there were 55 subjects yeah? and okay, on top of the, the, the five subjects that we have currently, last September, we, we also introduced additional subjects into the primary and lower secondary. And I'm glad my colleagues did that, yeah, because we introduced art and design, which I think is a very important subject. Dig digital literacy, music, and physical education. So these are new subjects where we introduced in September 2019. And also last year, September 2019, we also introduced uh, Malay as a first language, we first exam in uh, 2021. We also introduced Sanskrit. People may think that, you know, why Sanskrit? Yeah? But it's getting, uh, there's, <coughs> I think, India. Yeah? And we also rename computer studies and computer science yeah? to, keep, to keep up with what they call uh, developments in the world of IT. And when we look at the, I think Marie asked me to talk a little bit about awarding of grades in the June 2020 uh, session. So as a lot of you will know that Cambridge International, we have decided not to hold the June 2020 exam series yeah, in order to protect the safety of students and teachers. So what we did is that we take steps to provide students with fair grades using alternative assessment methods in order to enable students to get on with their educational journey as soon as possible. 
And our approach is to ask schools to collaborate with to collaborate with us so that we can make stringent evidence-based decisions about grades for each candidate. Yeah. So, so we came up with uh, the revised grades for the <coughs> June exam. Yeah. And just quickly to share with uh, participants, we have this alternative prospect yeah, of uh, alternative grades. And step one, we ask teachers to submit to collect evidence, whatever evidence they have and send it to us as predicted grades. And step two, we ask the teachers to rank the students of each particular grade. So we are we rank the students of A, A or A star, we put them one, two, three, four, five. Yeah? And there is no, no, no two persons who share the same rank. Yeah? And after that, the head of center is supposed to sign off, with, uh, validate, verify the, the predicted grades, send them off to Cambridge. And Cambridge will do an adjustment or a moderation. Yeah? So this is basically the process of how we're going to award grades for the May, June exams. Yeah? <clears throat> and very often we are asked, yeah, is the alternative process good enough? I think we can never match actual exam. But we try to come quite close to the exam. So what we do is that we believe it's the most valid, fair, an effective approach in these unusual circumstances. And we develop this process in coordination with our working bodies, yeah? governments, universities, and especially of course, which is the Office for Qualifications in the UK. It's just like our MQA in Malaysia, Malaysian Qualifications Agency. So OPPOL has developed a similar process for the GCSE and A levels for schools in England. So we are still uh, following the same process. And the grades awarded on June 2023 will look the same and have the same value as grades awarded in any other series. And universities understand our process and are committed to making um, students, <coughs> that, that students are treated with fairness and flexibility for admissions. And in Malaysia, we have been working with the Malaysian Qualifications Agency, informing them of this alternative rating, and also the private education division, also we keep them updated, so that they are aware of the this alternative process. Yeah? So, I just like to highlight a little bit, uh, the last step, step four, how are data standardized? Yeah? So we will carry out a statistical, statistical standardization, using evidence from the past performance of centers in the syllabus and global performance statistics. So we, we, we look at how the school has been doing previously the last three years or two years, and then we look at global performance statistics and then we do a, a comparison. And we do this aligned judgments across centers so that uh, students are set on still basis and not unfairly advantage or disadvantage in their next steps. And the grade we award to a candidate may or may not be the same as the predicted grade given by the center. And so I just want to uh, share this uh, very briefly with our colleagues out there. So we give you the assurance that it is a grade that will be fair and just as good uh, as an uh, excess grade here, you know, or the, the, the grade that they take through an exam. So <clears throat> I'll move on to the next one. Yeah? When we talk after the exam, so what do you do? What are career pathways after IGCSE? And even when you're going to do IGCSE, what are the subjects that you're going to take? How many subjects should you take? Yeah. So quite often during talks with, uh, with students, with parents, with teachers, the, the, the two common question they always ask, what's the minimum number of subjects? Or what's the maximum, maximum number of subjects should we take in the IGCSE exam? So they ask me, so, so I would say, who determines this? Yeah. So my answer is always, is actually the Ministry of Education. They require five credits, yeah? Five credits, C grade is the lowest credit, yeah? And above is B, A, and A star. To get admission into a new program, of course. And if you're in the sciences, you want to go into engineering, medicine, pharmacy, you can't run away from the three single sciences, biology, chemistry, physics, maths, additional maths, and English. So the minimum you have to take is actually six. And if you're going to the arts, 
you do arts, business, commerce, you will look at subjects like maths, English, combined science, business, ICT, geography, history, art and design, foreign language, Malay, Mandarin, and so on. If you take exactly five subjects, what if you get a B or you get only four credits in your exam? You'll be stuck there. So even for arts, the minimum I would recommend is also six. Yeah? So on average, a year 11 student in most schools, they take an average of eight subjects. Yeah? So when we look at the, the syllabus groups, yeah, in, in IGCSE, there are over about 76 subjects. Yeah? And we look at, we, we, we classify the subjects into uh, various categories. There's a creative and professional group where we look at accounting, art and design, business studies, computer science, uh, ICT, drama, enterprise, food and nutrition. Music, physical education, travel and tourism, maths, the traditional maths, and maths, maths and international maths, the traditional sciences, biochem, physics, we have coordinated sciences, combined science, and 21st century science. Then there's also English language and lead. There's first language English, second language, and English lead. Yeah? And languages, the first language are English, Japanese, Arabic, Chinese, Mandarin, French, Malay. We do this for the first time uh, last year. First exam it will be in June 2021 and also German. So uh, other uh, languages, we have a second language level, which is English, Hindi, Africa, Mandarin. And the third level, a lower level, level will be the foreign language, like Malay, German, Indonesian, Chinese, or Japanese. Yeah? And then we have the humanities and social sciences, where you have economics, geography, history, Islamia, a global perspective, sociology, and so on. So all in, we have about 76 subjects. Yeah? And our philosophy, when you take, when you choose a subject and recommend the school, what are the subjects option you ought to do? Yeah? So the, 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 the basic principles we always ask schools to follow is what we call look at a broad and balanced curriculum. We call it B and B curriculum. Yeah? B and B, broad and balanced. And quite often I challenge the school to also add another criterion into their, into their subject offering, I create a BBE curriculum. And they asked me, what's the E curriculum, Mr. Um? Yeah. And I say, E stands for enlightening curriculum, an enlightening subject. So they asked me, what subjects would you consider enlightening? So I like to be enlightening. Yeah. So when I say enlightening to me, it has to fulfill two requirements. Yeah. And the first, what you learn, you use for life. Now, if I learn to play a guitar, I quite likely use it for life. If I learn to play, play a basketball, I quite likely play it for life. If I learn, let's say, uh, IT skills, IT digital literacy, I most probably use it for life. If I learn to speak French, I most probably use it for life. So these are what we call enlightening subjects uh, to me. And the second criterion, I will say, what you learn will touch your soul. You will reach inside your heart. Yeah? And things like literature. If I read Julius Caesar, one of my favorite Shakespeare plays. Yeah? If I read Julius Caesar when I was in Form 5, yeah? and then I read it again when I was in Form 6, I read it again when I graduated from university, I read it again when I was 30 years old, it has different levels of interpretation, different relations to me. I will get a deeper and deeper insight into what Shakespeare is trying to tell, to tell, to, to tell us here. Yeah? So that to me is historical enlightening here. Yeah? And in the educational subjects, yeah, there are quite a number of enlightening subjects. Yeah? Art and design is very enlightening. If I learn how to read, if I learn poetry, if I learn how to do manuscript writing, I will use it for life and it, it will touch my soul. Yeah? So that to me, <coughs> when you choose subjects, yeah, the schools, Make sure that you do a BBE curriculum, broad, balanced, and enlightening. So, so there's a combination of hard skills and soft skills. So this is just give you an overview of the subjects, the wide range of subjects that you'll be able to select from the Cambridge curriculum. So, I <clears> hope <throat> for you. And then after IGCSE, what do you do? 
what are the what are the, the, the pathways uh, that you will you 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 will look at yeah and I just single out those I am aware of. We have the Cambridge AS level of the GCSE. It's a dual pathway. You can do AS and alone or even AL to uh, the program, the full uh, A levels. There's STPM, there's IB diploma, Ministry of Education Matriculation, South Australia Matriculation of HSC, American Degree Transfer Program, Advanced Placement, all the various diplomas in business, computing, IT, hotel management, international Canadian pre year program. The foundation programs, training programs, there are at least 11 review programs for you to choose from. It can be quite bewildering. Yeah, we look at it. And if you don't know which one you're going to go into, so how will you be guided? Yeah? So you ask, you ask yourself, you ask yourself, yeah, which one best suits me? Or get a good fit. I will, share, I will give you a tip how you're going to do this afterwards here. Yeah? You just hang on, be a bit patient. I will share with you how you're going to maneuver to navigate so that you choose something that really is, is a good fit for you in life. Yeah? And then I would just like to share with you what are the 15 top most popular subjects in Malaysia compared to students in the world? How different are Malaysian students in the choice of subjects compared to students in the world? Yeah, it is so I just I just look at 2018 and 19 subjects. Uh, it's quite close to 1718. And if we look at Malaysia, which is a top subject, maths, physics, chemistry, biology, foreign language, Malay is compulsory for Malays, for, for Malaysians who are studying international school. It just goes to show that there are more and more Malaysians enrolling into international schools, where Malay is compulsory. Yeah. So there's a there's a trend there. English is a second language. Both the count in and the endorsement order, yeah, are combined to one. And after that is additional mass. And it's interesting you notice English as a second language has higher number than first language English. You know, this was not the case five years back, where English as first language was higher. Yeah, so there's a, a reversal of trend. And we look at business studies, economics. So the top, followed by ICT, accounting, foreign language Mandarin, and Chinese as a second language. This is, these are the top 15 subjects. Huh? Actually, there are 14 because they combine English here yeah, that Malaysian students choose. Then if we look at how about world globally, what are the subjects that students, you know, in outside Malaysia, what subjects do they choose? Maths is the same. Uh, this is followed by first language English followed by English as a second language. And then comes the, the single sciences, physics, biology, chemistry, and ICT is also spring on the top. Business studies, economics, geography, not very popular among Malaysian students. Yeah, but globally, it is, a, it is a one of the top 10. Literature in English, history, additional maths, computer science. So these are the trends here. Yeah? We talk about Malaysia and global. Yeah? The subjects which students choose for IGCSE and you indicate the kind of career pathway that they're going to, 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 to do after IGCSE. Yeah? And then we look at how about A-levels? Which are the top 15 or A-level subjects that students from Malaysia choose and students from outside Malaysia choose? Yeah? So we look at A-levels at that level the top subject is maths, followed by chemistry, physics, economics rank among the top five, biology, law, business, accounting, psychology, further maths, literature and English, history, computer science, sociology and geography at the AS level. But I just want to go back, economics is growing in popularity among students from Malaysia. If we look at compared with the students outside Malaysia, you have maths, physics, chemistry, and after that, it's also economics. So there are actually a lot of science students now who also do economics. And they want to go to London School of Economics, they want to go to the top uh, uh, Imperial College and do economics. Somehow I think 
the, the brighter students nowadays they want to do actuarial science. They want to do more so MRSE and they want to go into finance and banking. I think you'll make a lot more money there than becoming a doctor. You know, a doctor's life is really like a dog, we will say. Work like anything, you know, slog like anything, no time to sleep, no balance between work and work and you know, life and work, you know. So the very smart students now, they go into economics and finance. And I was told that five, five six, seven years back at, 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 at A level at graduation ceremony, they attended and, and this is a very um, reputable like it's called Maybach, yeah? the, the advisor. He interviews students for Oxbridge. And he's telling me that it is harder to get into London School of Economics, Imperial College to do economics than medicine. Yeah. So that's the reverse in trend. At one time, everybody was scrambling to go into medical schools. Yeah? But I think the world is changing. So you look at it, people are looking at finance. Yeah? And, and it's always in great demand. Yeah? And if you look at biology, the sciences are still uh, very popular among the, 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 the A-level students. Business also ranked among the top 10. But you do get law for global students. But law is very popular among Malaysians. Yeah? It's just like law, I think, you know, a lot of Asian students still choose law as a career, yeah? but not so much globally. Yeah? So we look at law, business is the same, and of course they do the English uh, uh, language paper, and you look at Malaysia, and, 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 and a new subject that's growing in popularity is psychology. Yeah? Psychology, a lot of students look at MassCom, look at advertising, yeah, and even if you do medicine, yeah, you also uh, psychology is also useful. You do also you you, you find psychology is useful. Yeah, Doctor Gushilam from uh, uh, Ray will be very happy. Yeah? Doctor Gushilam is one of the very famous uh, psychologists, uh, like uh, psychology lecturer in Malaysia. Yeah, and uh, so you look at further down the whole world, you see for students from the world, psychology has also been picked as one of the top. Of 10 subjects yeah? and there's a literature and we look at the, the, the growth in computer science as well. Yeah. A lot of students are still going to computer science. So I, I, I think you know, you're getting quite tired of people telling you about IOT, you know, uh, I, uh, what AR, AI, uh, and uh, what else you have on robotics. Uh, and, and, but it's not part of computer science. Yeah? And in this COVID 19, where people have to work from home, IT has become even more important. Yeah? So there's a great interest in computer science. But on the other hand, also we look at globally, there's also a growing interest in marine science as well. Yeah, marine science. And other than these top 15 subjects for Malaysia or the world, in Malaysia, it's interesting what are some of the additional subjects yeah, that we see more students taking up. It's music, Chinese, IT computer science, and also art and design, geography, marine science, and also more students are doing German language. There are more Malaysian students who are going to Germany for further studies because it's, 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 it's a further education is free in Germany. Yeah? So we have like German Malaysian Institute, um, uh, this uh, Intech alarm, they prepare students to, to, to do engineering in, in Germany. So it is uh, one of the uh, good subjects as well. And globally, we also see trends in uh, subjects like music, art and design, uh, Hindi, physical education, African, and also drama. Yeah? So this is give, give you an overview as to what are the subjects yeah, which students in Malaysia are, are currently uh, choosing, and students outside Malaysia are also currently choosing. And there's uh, a lot of overlap yeah, if, you, if you look at the left and the right uh, columns. Yeah. So, in the end, you ask yourself, yeah, which course or choice of subject or is best to see? So, how to get a good fit? Yeah? And about two, two weeks back, I was also uh, in, in, in a webinar where I joined the Go and a few uh, career counselors and uh, uh, career, uh, what they call this, uh, they, they give. Uh, Talks on the choice of careers. And uh, Dr. Go brought up a, a quite an interesting tip. How do you, when you, you look at careers, you look at choice of subjects, yeah? how do you 
how do you uh, choose this subject? What guiding principle should you should you be following? So it's in about three three key areas. Yeah? Number one is talent. What talent? What skills do you have? Then I stand for interest. If you have interest in it, you will you will last long in that area. But I extend the interest to also the time to also include inclination. What you're inclined to, what you like, your interest. And also in a way, I can also stand for and also stand for inspiration. What inspires you in life? What gives you inspiration to do something in life? Yeah, so I can you can you can still put many things in your eye, yeah? So keep the last one key is passion. Yeah, you must have the passion to study, to pick up a career or an area of study so that you will enjoy, you will like, you will be happy in what you what 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 you did. Yeah? And the best the best career I think anybody can choose is where you can combine hobby and vocation. Yeah? So this morning when I visited a school, I went to the music room and the, the, the music teacher was uh, uh, showing 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 me the guitar, the drums, and so on. Yeah, and I said, Can you, can you strum a song for us? You know, and he took the guitar and he played some rock music, dance music, blues music. You know, and I was just saying, That is possibly the best job you can get in life where you are being paid to do what gives you the greatest joy. Okay? So, if you can find a job, yeah, which combines that, I think you're in for a good, in a very good fit, you yeah, know, to put it that way. And also, when I was uh, um, in, in the same talk before uh, the time, some, uh, one of the lecturers uh, fresh is a little uh, 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 kind of like a poster where quite often is being quoted, yeah? and it says, "Attitude plus attitude will determine your attitude. How far you go in life, yeah? your attitude and your attitude will determine your attitude." your altitude and i always like to uh, uh, move things further so i call it the 3a or also the 4a principle yeah i would say what is important also your attributes if you have attributes or your skills what you put there plus your attitude your inclination what you what, what you do well and then your attitude you determine your attitude how you're going to 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 to, to live life here. Yeah? These three these three ingredients are very powerful ingredients, which will ultimately determine your altitude. Yeah, prove me wrong. Yeah, so I just want to share this what I think will help a student. Yeah, to find a good fit. So that's the tip I'm sharing with you today. And uh, do check our Cambridge website www.cambridgeinternational.org. Our customer services info at Cambridge International phone number is 10. My contact is also in the website. We operate from Malaysia in Icon Office, yeah, uh, session uh, SSA. And I just want to close today's session and I just have to say thank you for your participation. Yeah? And I'll take questions and questions and answers. Yeah, questions now. Okay, Eunice, can I pass it to you, Amari? Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Ng. For coming in, actually, it's a blessing for us that uh, you are here and uh, for this forum. So, uh, parents, if you've got any question, you can actually ask. We do have some questions that they actually asked previous uh, last few days. Uh. So, example, uh, one by Warren. Will IGCSE be moderating students' predicted exam results based on their school past performance as was done for the IBDP, creating huge controversy. Maybe you can actually, I will repeat again the question. <clears throat> Would IGCSE be moderating students predicted exam results based on their school past performance as was done for the <clears throat> IBDP? This one actually created huge controversy. So what is your opinion, Mr. Ng? Hey Marie, that, that, that question can be split into two parts, yeah? but I only answer the first part. I won't say anything about IBDP because okay. I don't vote for IDP, I, I, IBDP. Yeah? But what we do, as I explained just now, 
we will look at one one of the one of the statistic evidence that we will look at will be the schools uh, kind of like the last one two three years performances uh. and if a school is new we will look at other evidences it's not the only evidence that we will look at we will compare their performance and we also before we actually find give the final grade we will also share with school the assess grade that that we have given to the school so then they will come back and they say this year we've got a stronger cohort yeah we got a better business let's say for business studies we got a better business studies teacher then you can write a report come back to us and then we can still there's still opportunity to adjust the grades we do give schools the opportunity to review to look through the the grades that we have we have we have we have uh, we have moderated so that they have a chance to also uh, give their views so we do that in order to ensure that both parties will will will, will, will benefit yeah so we try to come to and, and, and as, 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 as accurate a great as we can. I won't comment on IB, yeah? I hope that's okay, Marie. Yeah, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah. Um, Mr. Ng, there is one question coming in from the Zoom chat from a Dr. Sabrina. Uh, her question is, may I know if MOE has accepted Bahasa Malaysia as a first language as equivalent to Bahasa Malaysia SPM paper? Thank you, Eunice. That's, that's a very good. A that's a very good. That's a very good question. Yeah, is that from uh, Noni? Is that right? Yeah, from me. That's right, Noni. Okay. Yeah. You see, when we when we when we develop uh, IGCSC Malay as a first language, our intention, our purpose is never to go anywhere in SPM Malay. We can never steal the thunder from the lembaga perpraksaan. We are, we don't intend to go anywhere near near to SPM, but the first language Malay will be a good preparation for you to, to, to take SPM Malay later on if you want to. Our main purpose in developing first language Malay is to cater to students from Malaysian state schools who finish standard six, who join international schools, who have a higher command of Malay, and they want a more challenging Malay paper. So our first language Malay is designed along the line as First language Arabic, first language Mandarin, first language Japanese, first language uh, French. Yeah? So it is that level. So in no way, uh, in no way do we intend to come, you know, to, to compete or to come near SPM. But it is good preparation for SPM. So for students who, who want to, let's say, go into the professional board later on, and if they need Malay, the SPM Malay, then they go and see SPM Malay. Yeah, so it is a new subject. Of course, we will try to seek better recognition for our first language Malay paper. But recognition is a very tricky and a very complex area. You know, a new product, you can't demand, hey, give me recognition. It, recognition, just like respect, yeah? it has to be earned. And you can earn it after certain years. Yeah? So, but it's good that you raised the question. So I explained to you the rationale. You want to, to find out is on our website. Yeah? The rationale, why we introduced first language Malay. And I, 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 if I could just share with colleagues here, IGCSE first language Malay, we took more than five years to convince Cambridge Program Board to, 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 to offer this subject. Yeah? We did a lot, of, a lot of research, got a panel, and if I may say something, I've, I've also told the examiners, the teachers are teaching this subject, please regard IGCSE first language Malay as one of Malaysia's national treasures. Yeah. It is only specifically for Malaysia. 99.9% .9 of the entries will come from Malaysians. And we just want to fulfill the need, the, 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 the need of students who finish state schools in, after primary six join international school in year seven or, or, or secondary one and they want a more challenging Malay paper. So I hope that answered the question, Noni. Right, I think that that's a very good answer. Thank you very much. I think a lot of people always ask that question whether it's recognized. But yes, it does give the opportunity for um, those who are stronger in Bahasa to actually do it 
as um, do the SPM paper later on if, the, if it is required by uh, whichever profession that they want to join back in Malaysia. Okay, I, I'm going to grab this opportunity. You know, Ms. Seng, I, get very, I don't get an opportunity to see you this so often. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions of my own. Um, at one stage, I remember uh, a few years back, I introduced child development as an IGCSE subject. And we were very excited over this introduction. But unfortunately, a few years later, I learned that it was being weaned out. So at the moment, um, as I noticed when you shared the subjects, that was not mentioned. Now, was that because you had too many subjects to share, but it is still there? Or has it actually been removed from a, uh, a subject for IGCSE? Uh, thanks a lot, Noni. I think we have we have removed that subject because yeah. of low demand. We have oh, very few yeah. entries here. Yeah? So as we as as we add on as you add on new subjects, uh, we also review subjects which have become less popular. Yeah, we cannot keep cramming cramming in, and then you know we don't remove things which are not. You know, so currently we look at the seventy six subjects uh, in IGCSE, and you can also take a few subjects. From the, the traditional O level paper, yeah. yeah. So an example, like since you 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 bring this out, we have in IGCSE other than child. So so the first answer, answer child development, we have actually removed uh, 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 that subject because of low entries, yeah, low demand. But at the same time, we still retain certain languages, yeah. One of which I will, I, if I can just single out, will be Hindi and Tamil. Yeah. So in IGCSE, we have we offer Hindi, but in the traditional O level, we still have Tamil. Yeah, because Tamil is still very popular. Uh, even in Malaysia, we have got some some students who offer Tamil. But on the IGCSE in the international level, we offer Hindi. Yeah, but if you like to do uh, the Tamil, you can do it from the O level, the suite of uh, subjects from the O level. Yeah. So 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 we in a way you got so a lot more subjects now. Uh, and there are also some students, uh, since you brought this thing up, yeah, we have like in the creative and professional, there is also uh, design communication, there's still some other subjects, yeah? yeah. Design communication, there's still some students who do it, and there's fashion and textiles. I remember yeah. you used to teach uh, home science, yeah? Yes, correct. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so we have fashion and textiles, and of course the same one, food and nutrition. Yeah. And some students are still, uh, they like statistic paper. So if you like very traditional paper, it's still being offered. which is a second language paper. Half paper, yeah? If you get, if you, if you get a, 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 a B or a C on English as a second language paper, you are readily accepted into a pre-U program in a university. You have fulfilled the condition for the ability, the requirement to be able to pursue further studies. It is a very high level paper. Yeah? And it's meant for speakers or non-native speakers. And if you look at all the four skills, speaking, listening, they are very demanding. It's not an easy paper. If I can say something, yeah? it's actually the standard is even higher than 1919. Because in 1919, you don't access listening and speaking. You only take the written component. So we look at the triple one English language paper SPM. Yeah. So this is stating it objectively. So when because when you compare different uh, uh, the you, you, 
you compare the same, yeah, as you say, apple and apple, we look at English as a second language is a very tough paper. And for, for most universities, yeah, for students who want to apply for further studies, they accept English as a second language, a credit as having the ability to pursue further education. Unless you want to go into a, a, a top university, you want to go and do law, then the university may require you to have uh, an, an, an A or maybe at least a, 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 an A for uh, English as a second language and a B for first language English. Yeah? So that, 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 that is what we call uh, different universities who have different uh, oh, yeah. I would say different uh, different admission criteria, yeah. So yes. or, or requirements, yeah. So you have to you have you have to 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 look at it differently. But what you say, English the second language is actually a very it's a very high level paper. And the second point, I just want to share with you a lot of how how did this trend come about. A lot of people do not know because they don't know who are the people who come in with English the second language. Yeah? Over these last five years, see, traditionally, international schools were only meant for children of aspect community. So we have a lot more English-speaking students who enroll into international schools. So most of them, like we look at the world, world, uh, world students, English is a first language, have got more entries than English as a second language. But in Malaysia, the last three years, we have more students doing English as a second language than first language English. So who are the majority of students who do English as a second language? Let me share this with you. 15 centers Maktab Renda Science Mara. Each Maktab Renda Science Mara has an average of 150 IGCSE students. The bulk of English as a second language entries come from Maktab Renda Science Mara. So we take, we take out the 15 MRSM in Malaysia, it will still be first language English. Yeah, but we also have non-native speakers. We've got students who, who come from the, 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 the state schools who don't have a, a very high command uh, of, of, of English. Then English as a second language is, is a good option. Yeah. So I hope that helps. Yeah, help to answer uh, uh, the the perception, yeah, that English as a second language. Is, 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 is the type of like watered down uh, English language paper. It yeah. is not, yeah. Please, you know, go and take a look and try to do the, 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 the test paper and see whether you get good grade or not. Yeah, it is yeah. very challenging. It's, it's actually yeah. skill-based, whereas the first language English requires a good flow of, of language for them because it's, it's more writing, you know, long pieces which they need to digest from the passages that they read. Yes, uh, thank you so much for clarifying and also for confirming what I am trying to also put across to a lot of people. And um, the, we also have quite a number of questions that are coming in right now. Um, okay, asking on behalf, could Mr. Ng address the positioning of CAIE, Edexcel and AQA papers for IGCSE, particularly on science subjects. This comes from Miss Elizabeth Long. Uh, okay, thanks, Moni, yeah? and thanks, Elizabeth. Yeah? You see, specifically, I represent Cambridge Assessment International Education. The last thing I will want to, to you know, to speak is, to, is for Edexcel or Oxford AQA. Yeah, so. They are they offer similar papers. We are actually equivalent exams. I always use the word equivalent. That's that's the best I can say. And all the three exam boards are actually regulated by Ofqual. And in, in UK, they do GCSE. Yeah, they have to be regulated by Ofqual. But IGCSE has got a, a, a bit a, a leeway, you know, in a sense it's offered to, to students outside UK. Yeah. So we have at Excel International offering of, uh, uh, quite a few IGCSE subjects. And we also have got Oxford AQA offering quite a few uh, IGCSE subjects. Yeah? And if I can say, we they are supposed to be, we will consider them as equivalent exams. Uh, yeah? But they have got different subjects, the format is different, the, 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 the topic areas that we cover could differ slightly. Yeah? So, the, the, but these exam boards, 
they all have to be regulated by Ofqua. Mm. Yeah, that, 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 that much I can say, no need. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm, I'm sure that will clarify. I understand that you would not like to say, oh, one yeah. board is better than the other, that because they're all kind of different, but also the same. Yeah. So I think Miss Mari has a couple of questions that she has picked up from the um, forum. So um, Miss Mari, have you got thanks, questions? Thanks, Miss Pierce. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Ng, the parents actually asked uh, Mrs. Tewer, she actually asked that what's the difference between private candidate and school candidate? Uh, okay, will, thanks, will Marie. Have any impact? Okay, thanks a lot, yeah. Thank you. you see, when you're a private candidate, yeah, you have to look for a place to see the exam. Yeah. And you study on your own. There are quite a number of, I would say, uh, curriculum limitations as well. Yeah? Private candidate cannot do coursework. You cannot offer to do the, the, the cost option, you know, for one thing. And so that rules you out from if there's a subject uh, which requires like project work, like PE, music, a private candidate cannot do. So in terms of subject availability, subject options, there's a limitation to that, you know, the first thing. Second one, when you study in, in, as, a, as a private candidate, as, sorry, is when you study as a private candidate, you don't get the full facilities of an international school. You will most prob probably just do the core subjects or the hard skill subjects. As I mentioned earlier on, you will possibly just do English, bio, chem, physics, maths, and maths. But are you able to do ICT? Are you able to do music? Are you able to do drama? Can you do literature? Can you uh, do art and design? So you are limited by the soft skill subjects as well. As I, said, I mentioned just now, the enlightening subjects. This is where you get in an international school. And in, in a lot of my talks to parents, yeah, uh, in, in, in various public forums, I will always advise, you know, I guess share what I what what in my opinion, the two key areas that a parent should look at when you choose which international school to enroll your child in. Yeah, I'll just share this with you. Yeah. The first one you look at is a subject offering. Yeah. If the international school offers subjects you know, which are quite similar to the Kebangsaan Kebang School, the state school next door, then why do you need to pay 1,500 ringgit a month to send your child to international school? Does that make sense? Specifically, no other languages, English and Malay, you know, but no other languages, you can't learn Japanese, you cannot learn Mandarin, you cannot learn Arabic, you know, and you, 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 cannot, you cannot learn how to read music, no ICT, you know. So that's the one. The choice of subject is very important. Yeah? A good international school must offer a good range of subjects. As I say, broad, balanced, and enlightening subjects. That's so how you get the all-rounded student. Yeah? That's the, the, that's the second point you have to look at is the quality of teachers. Yeah? The quality of teachers makes a world of difference. Yeah? Qualified teachers, if you have the right qualification, they will always want to teach in an inter international school which pays better. You know? So you go to private, the, I, 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 I'm, I'm not trying to say that teachers in, in private, uh, uh, private, private learning centers are not, uh, are not up, up to a certain level. Yeah? Not, in, in, in no way do I mean that. Huh? But what I'm trying to say is that in international school, the teachers will get better support from the exam bodies like us. Huh? They come for training, they got better curriculum, uh, support from us, you know. So in terms, and that makes a difference, yeah, a world of difference yeah. to, to teaching quality. Yeah? So I think I, I would just like to stress these two points. So do take a look also at the quality of the teachers in the international school. Yeah? And, and very often I was attending uh, what you call uh, a, a talk, yeah? and one of the Famous professors yeah, that they often quote nowadays is John Hattie, Professor John Hattie. And I think he made a very powerful statement, which is very hard to debate. Yeah? And this is something that he says yeah? excellence in teaching. Excellence in teaching is the single most powerful influence on student achievement. Excellence in teaching is the single most powerful influence on achievement, on student achievement. So you can't possibly run away from that. So if you look at it, 
you pay you pay for a uh, 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 more effective you know uh, better uh, what you call facilities better quality uh, in terms of teaching in terms of resources and at, at, at the same time as i say it's also choice of subjects so i heard answer the question marie yes yes you did the support from cambridge is definitely there the support from cambridge yes because the fact that you have the online and you have the face-to-face -face courses that really helps the teachers who are on board with CAIE to be able to enhance their skills and to learn and to keep abreast with the times and the new developments, et cetera, that Cambridge is, is, is able to offer us. Yeah? Um, Mr. Ng? Uh, yeah, Mr. Ng, for yes, example, Marie. for year 11, they are sitting for, uh, as a private candidate, will it have any, like, example, uh, impact with no school name, example, on the IGCSE cert? Uh, okay, that's a good question, yeah. When you sit as a private candidate, the, the school uh, that, that uh, allows you, handles your, your exam, you have to put in as a status is private, yeah? And it's our policy where the name of the, the school is not printed on the certificate. Yeah? But that doesn't jeopardize the value of the certificate. Yeah? You, you, when you, when you, when you uh, use a certificate to apply for a pre-year program, if uh, an inst the receiving institution is not sure about the authenticity of the certificate, they can always do a verification. A statement, yes. a state certificate verification with us, yeah. So it is, it is as good as said that you can't because you are not actually a student of that school. You see, so you 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 prepare, you sit, you you, you prepare yourself privately, and you only sit, you only you go for that school for the exam. So and and and, and some some schools are also reluctant, you know, for their schools to, to to be to be printed on your certificate because you are not their student. They wouldn't want to be responsible, you know, to be held responsible for for the results that you obtain, you know. So that 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 is the the uh, our, our our exam policy, yeah, Marie. Yeah, but it doesn't it doesn't really impact. It doesn't neither does it, it doesn't impact. Neither does it impair, you know, the value of the certificate. Yeah. Um, we had a question. Um from uh, an anonymous que uh, question, but I think you've already answered it, but I'm going to read it out anyway. May I know any difference for kids going to homeschool and taking IGCSE examinations compared to kids taking the IGCSE exam in, uh, an, an, in an international school? <laughs> So I think you've already... I think I've answered the question correct. earlier on. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So just yeah. for that person who asked that question, it has already yeah. been answered. Yeah. Then there is one more from a Dr. Zabrina. Is it true that when a student takes his subjects in, uh, in, in two different years, his results used for his pre-university application will be seen to have less weight as compared to if he took all subjects in one year? I can answer that question, but I'll let you answer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Noni. Uh, the, the answer is that it makes no difference. Yeah. So whether you do four subjects in uh, June exam and another four subjects in the November exams, the value is just the same. Yeah. For admission into a pre-U program, a pre-U, pre-UC program, like I mentioned just now, the 11 pre-U programs, the receiving institution can accept two, a combination of one, two or more than two certificates. Yeah? You see, like some of our subjects are only available in a May-June series, like Mandarin, Malay. So you have to sit in, in, in May-June, yeah. the two, three subjects, you know, and then you take the remaining subjects in, 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 Octo in, in October, November. Yeah. And likewise, we have students, some schools, they ask the student to sit match when they are in year 10. And if your match is not good enough, then they'll ask you not to do further maths or additional maths when you go to year 11. So, but you still have a certificate when you're in year 10. And if you have the uh, two, two, what you call, uh, two, two, two credits, you can combine it with your, the, the following, the following uh, exam series and apply for uh, a place in a, in, in a pre-year program. Yeah? The, the basic requirement is five credits. 
and you can combine. You can even combine two credits from uh, IGCSE, uh, two credits from uh, the GCO level, the traditional O level, and also two credit, credits from SPM. So you have six credits. It's, it's fine. You, the, 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 the receiving institution will still, will still accept you. Uh, that is for IGCSE. But if you are doing A levels or STPM, most the majority of universities would require you to, uh, to achieve at least two principles or three principles in one sitting. Uh, that is the difference with, uh, uh, between IGCSE and A levels. Yeah, I so I'll just uh, share that share that point. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very okay, much. Yeah. Um, Aimi has asked this question, but I think it's it's uh, can you take English as a first language? Uh, at the same sitting as English is a second language, but that is a definite no, right? You can't yeah. take both at the same not, time. Not in the same series, yeah? Yes, correct. Yeah. Um, okay, this is a very long question, so please digest. Mr. Ng, now that CAIE offers more than just English, science and math, what is CAIE doing to encourage more international schools to be part of Cambridge School, who are accredited to teach these subjects. Um, I'm just reading it as it is, accredited as in for their teachers to receive training and resources support from CAIE. Currently, there are quite a number of international schools offering national curriculum of England for primary and lower secondary school but I don't believe these schools are getting training nor resources, support from MOE of England. So who's supporting them for this part of the journey towards the IGCSE? Actually, it's a very complicated question. Yeah? Yeah. I, don't really, <laughs> I don't really understand what you mean by MOE of England. Yeah? Yeah. If, you're I... school in, if you're at a school in Malaysia, a private school, how do you expect the MOE of England to support you? I think it's quite perplexing, yeah. I am, I am quite, support, quite perplexed, so. yeah. But if you are registered with us, you get yeah. the appropriate support, you get the right level, you know, of support from us. There's also, if you go back to uh, the earlier question when Marie asked, you know, on you regarding the private candidate, yeah, there is also the, 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 the disadvantage of, 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 of teaching and curriculum support from us, mm -hmm. other than the, the limitation in terms of choice of subjects that you can offer, yeah. yeah? So, I, I, I think. It, it is quite, uh, quite, 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 quite complicated, you know, quite hard to digest. Huh? Yeah, it was very long, but I think number one, CAIE of, has been offering a full, a, law, a, a wide range of subjects for, as far as I can remember, it's not just the English science and math. And basically, if you are certified by Cambridge and you, you run your program, you get the support right down from the primary upwards. So it depends on whether you are actually accredited by Cambridge because you are accredited for the IGCSE, but you're accredited also for the checkpoint exams. And that's where you get your full support, where the teachers can then um, make a veil uh, of everything that is um, on the, the protected site of Cambridge, yes? Yes, I, I think if we just talk a little bit on, on the word accreditation, you, you have to be very careful, yeah? That's called mm -hmm. various yes. levels of, of accreditation, yeah? It can mean official approval, there's a difference between endorsement, uh, uh, there's an, 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 a, 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 a difference, a, a different levels of, uh, and also recognition, yeah? So when we say you're a Cambridge school, which means you fulfill the requirements of a Cambridge school. You have the, 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 you have the teachers, you're able to implement the curriculum, you have the facilities, you have the proper science lab, IT labs, the, the, the strong room, the ability to, you know, to, to conduct our exams. And also in Malaysia, you also have to fulfill requirements from the Ministry of Education as well, the private education division. They are the ones who also will go in and see whether you have fulfilled MOE's approval. And if you are a Malaysian, you study international school, you have to do the Malaysian subjects. You have to study uh, Malay compulsory. You have, if you are a non-Malay, you have to do political moral. And if you are a, a Muslim, you have to follow uh, uh, Islamic studies. You see? And you have also to do uh, Malaysian history. These are all various areas of, of, of compliance. So you, you want to use you know, the, word, the word accreditation is, is, quite, is, is quite complex. Yeah? 
So we use the, the word is uh, an easier word is approval no? as, as an approved exam center as an approved, approved Cambridge school. So currently we don't we don't we don't enforce or the uh, uh, teachers accredited. No? The one that does accreditation is this a program is actually Malaysian Qualifications Agency. Yeah, they will come and do the assessment and see how to what extent have you reached their, their expected standard or their minimum standards. We, we expect a, a school to fulfill, to employ qualified teachers to deliver a group program. And if not, the Ministry of Education also will go after you. Mm. See? If your students don't do well, if parents come and complain, if you are, if, if you are shortchanging uh, uh, students, you know, if you're supposed to give, uh, uh, let, let's say, eight, eight, eight periods of uh, uh, English a week, and you, need, and, and you need to give four periods or three periods, you know, mm. parents will complain and then the ministry will come after you. Yeah. yeah? Uh, okay, just a uh, touch on a few areas uh, relating to that question. Yeah, Noni? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, for me, just one thing that, that comes to mind right now. Now, we've had this really, what would you say, um, uh, with the pandemic, it has really caused a shift in the fact that the children have not been able to do their exams and now the assessment is being done and teachers have got to be on board and obviously be prepared with the with the requirements that are which Cambridge demands yes now it is already July um, and uh, October November is not very long down the road uh, are there, have there been any discussions or has there been any talk about uh, how that, th those exams may be affected or are we expected to kind of come out of this and uh, move smoothly uh, in the future? Okay, two key points here, yeah? uh, Noni. As, uh, Cambridge has put in a lot of support, yeah? support for uh, teachers and uh, students yeah. uh, because of uh, when schools are closed, huh? yeah. So we look into the website and share the website just now. Yes. There is a lot of uh, uh, what they call uh, online support, uh, virtual support, digital resources, yeah. which are provided by us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of webinars that they're organizing, a lot of on uh, uh, what they call online training for teachers as well. Mm -hmm. And we work in collaboration with our endorsed publishers. Yeah, mm -hmm. they have also diligently. Uh, uh, put up quite a lot of uh, their their own uh, digital resources for teachers and students to access. Yeah, yes. and and these uh, uh, publishers include Cambridge University Press, mm -hmm. uh, Collins, yes. Holder Murray, yeah. and also Marshall Cavendish. Yeah, for uh, yeah. Uh, for maths and science. Yeah, so do also log into the website if you need additional resources. That's the one. When, uh, the first my first point. The second point you're talking about exams. Yeah. So I have also been asked, and then if you look at our website, which is the most reliable, yes. the October exams, October November exams, the timetable is already out. Yep. Plus also okay. the additional subjects here. Yeah? So we we are planning for the October uh, 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 November exams yeah? to go on as scheduled. Yeah, okay. God willing. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Yeah, we we, mm. we we are all praying that this will be you know, slowly settle in and we will move on. But obviously, it does. It, it it definitely opens the eyes of the schools here that they've got to be prepared in event of anything, not just COVID. Could be anything else that we have got to make sure that we are prepared to to fulfill all the requirements that Cambridge requires in case there is something else that comes up and exams are delayed or postponed, etc. Yes, yeah. okay. Uh, Miss Marie, are there any more questions? Because I can't, I, the ones I have seen are the ones that I have read. Are there any more questions for Mr. Ng? I, yeah, we got one, actually got one question. The direct question is the, just now uh, Elizabeth Wong, uh, mm -hmm wrote two paragraph now is direct question is who is supporting and monitoring international schools teacher for their primary upper secondary curriculum delivery to summarize the whole thing who is supporting and monitoring international school teachers for their primary upper secondary curriculum uh, delivery? Uh, yes just saw that the last question yeah uh, i think no need also to answer the question yeah Supporting monitoring is actually the individual school's responsibility. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We yeah. provide a lot of support on our school support hub. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have we leave the, the owners of 
uh, teacher monitoring, teacher delivery, teacher competency, rest squarely the on the school's yep. academic uh, 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 academic panel. Yeah, in order to to ensure that the the school delivers an effective uh, primary, lower secondary uh, program. Yeah, so and. The, the other party that also comes in to, to help to do monitoring is actually the private education division. They have to ensure, you know, that the school uh, employs the teach, qualified teachers. So this is also another area where the private learning center will also will also lose out, yeah, uh, because the 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 internet the approved international schools, yeah, the private education division will check, yeah, and we, when we talk about um, what is what is what uh, what they call um, what what is um, considered appropriate teaching qualification requirement here? Yeah? So I've also been asked this question. Yeah, for a lot of teachers, if you want to be given a teaching permit, you want to teach an international school or or, or or a private school, you have to first of all have what we, what we call an academic qualification. Yeah. Either a BA, a BSc, or an MSc, the first one. So you have to have an academic qualification followed by a professional qualification. So we call it Kelayakan uh, Academic and Kelayakan uh, 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 Iktisas. Yeah? So the professional qualification. So you have to have, let's say, a BSc or, 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 or a BA or MA. On top of that, you ought to have a certificate in teaching. Or the diploma in teaching, or the PGCE, or the TESOL. You also ought to have a teaching certificate in order for the private education to give you an approval to teach uh, for the teaching permit in an international school. So the the, the private education division is also uh, another what we call custodian of quality yeah. teaching in schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope I answered your question, Elizabeth. Um, again, uh, uh, one other question from Sarah K. Oh, sorry, uh, from Joanne. I think we will last ask, uh, uh, Mr. Ng, uh, do you have time? We will ask the uh, last three questions. Sure, uh, three I, questions. I, I, I hope the, the participants out there are not tired of hearing my voice. You <laughs> yeah, know? So we're supposed, we're yeah, not supposed to have one hour, yeah? so yeah. do, do tell me you know, now. If, if, if you have enough of me on, 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 on the screen. Yeah? No, 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 so, cannot, have, cannot have enough of you, Mr. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't offer you a Starbucks coffee or something unless uh, it's worry, a virtual. Not to worry, not to worry. Yeah, sure. You yes, know, it, um, it's, it's always a joy to be able to share yeah. To share uh, what they call or uh, what yeah. I know, to share information with parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. carry on. Uh, uh, Sarah K has asked, what's the difference between O levels and IGCSE? Uh, okay, uh, good, 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 yeah. good question. Yeah. So we look at um, historically yeah. when we have the GCE O level in, in, in UK, yeah? so we got a general certificate of education. And this was actually replaced by GCSE in UK. Yeah. So if you look at it technically, there's no longer GCE O level in UK for this exam. So the replacement is GCSE, yeah, General Certificate of Secondary Education, yeah, UK. So students in UK they do GCSE. But Cambridge exams, 22 years back, we launched IGCSE, which is uh, 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 an extension of GCSE but with an international flavor. You know, so to to uh, to, uh, to 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 what it call a uh, 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 promote it to students outside UK. So we and so there is actually uh, no more GCE, the traditional GCO level. So we launched GCSE is another version of O level. We launched IGCSE is also another version of O level. So what we did is that we took the GCO level, the traditional GCO level in UK, and launched it as international GCE O level, yeah. and. Because this traditional O level is still very popular in countries like Pakistan, India, Sri Lanka, UAE, Egypt. They like it's a straightforward. There's no core and extended. So it's actually a, a single. We call it single tier curriculum for the, the traditional GC O level. Whereas IGCSE, there's some subjects which have a core and an extended level. Yeah, for maths. For science, 
So there are certain subjects that's core and extended, but both of both of these exams are classified as equivalent equivalent exam at the O levels. Yes. So likewise, we have many, we have several versions of O levels. If you look at it, if you have an SPM certificate, you go back today, you flip the back of it, it tells you that this is similar in standard to SPM O levels. You know? So SPM is also another version of O levels, except it's done in Malay. And we look at we have Singapore GCO level. We have Brunei GCO level where we, we jointly set the papers with them. And we have Mauritius GCO level. You know? So there, there are several versions of GCO levels. Yeah? So we still retain the, the traditional GCO levels, but we launch it as technically it's called international GCEO levels. So they are equivalent exams. Yeah. So yeah. I hope I answered the question, Nani. Yeah, it is yeah. equivalent, but I think the formatting and all is yeah. slightly different. Yeah, slightly and the, different. Correct. The right. way the, the questions are posed. But technically, yeah. you could do either one and it gives you the yeah. passport to move on. Yes? Yeah, yeah. The skills okay. are at that level. Yeah. Yes. The skills okay. and the standards. Yeah. This is very interesting from Joanne. Based on what the information that you have shared today, is the CIDTT still considered valid? But I believe it's not CIDTT anymore. It's changed. Its yeah. acronym has changed as well. Is it still valid? It's, it's CIDTL. TL, it used to be CID, right. it is, but, uh, in other words, it's the Cambridge International uh, Diploma oh, in ma. Teaching and Training. Last time we called it, yeah? Yes. And now yes. it's uh, Teaching and Learning. Learning, correct. It, if you have the, the CIDTT, you, uh, you fulfill the ministry requirement as well, I say just now, yeah. of uh, professional qualification. It is of very good value. It has got very strong industry recognition. Yeah. If you want to, you, to apply for a teaching job, go to Pine Hills, Marie will accept you. <laughs> if you have a CIDTT, yeah? So... It, it, it is a, it is a, it is a very, uh, very competent and a very rigorous uh, professional teaching qualification. Yeah. Yes, I do encourage teachers or uh, teachers to to look at that if they are thinking, you know, or they're thinking of someone who wants to 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 take up teaching to look at that as well as an alternative to other ways and means of getting their qualification. Yeah, okay. Um, this uh, another question from Janine Lewington Dormer. Um, I'm not, I can't, I can't actually grasp what it means, but maybe you can, so may I know the percentage of pupils in Malaysia who have exams access arrangements for IGCSEs, please? So is it just that how many people can actually do the IGCSEs in Malaysia? I'm, I'm not sure what she's trying to specifically ask. May I know the percentage of pupils in Malaysia who have exams access arrangements for IGCSEs? Okay, okay. I, 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 I think what she's trying to, uh, to, to inquire is when we talk about access arrangements, it means a special considerations, yeah? Access, let's say you have got um, a child with learning disability, oh, yeah? Okay, you have okay. got a dyslexic child, you have got a, 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 a you, are, you are kind of like a visually challenged, yeah. or you are kind of like hearing, hearing difficulty. So you can ask for a special consideration and also special access arrangement. We have got a lot of, uh, I mean, we do provide uh, such arrangements for uh, for candidates with special needs, yeah? yeah. And it is difficult to 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 say there are some schools which cater to students with uh, special needs, mm -hmm. uh, some don't. But uh, broadly speaking, if I can if I can just give an educated guess, yeah, for for students from Malaysia who need uh, who need access arrangement, I would say it's just between one and two percent. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That is that that is my educated guess, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, compared, you know, it, it's just that. Yeah. I hope and I answer I answer a uh, Janine's uh, a question. Uh, yeah. yeah I'm not sure whether you. Janine is the is, <laughs> is the spouse of Charles Dormer because the surname is very, uh, it is very unusual. Yeah. Charles Dormer is I the am. principal of Mila International I School. <laughs> yeah, I guess you know because you know everyone, oh, Mr. Um. Oh no, no, say, say, say hello to Charles for me, yeah, uh, 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 Janine, yeah. Okay. 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 Right. Um, 
but also it's when you okay when you're talking about this inclusion of children with with uh, certain difficulties or disabilities like uh, dyslexia etc when they are uh, is it uh, what is the the time frame of when the um what would you say uh, medical reports need to be handed in is it within the year that the exam is going to be taken that the most recent report needs to be submitted I, I, I think we have got quite a quite a, 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 a long grace period of at least I think one to two years uh, when okay. the last report yeah but mm -hmm. if let's say you have got further developments uh, your your report if it's about it's been done two years back may not be that accurate enough so it may ah. not reflect the true the, the current condition okay. of the candidate yeah? yeah so it's always it's always advisable to submit the latest report so that we can match the 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 the, the, the additional uh, what they call uh, the uh, access arrangements, you know, the additional needs here, yeah? we can measure yes. what, what the child will, will need from us. Uh, extended, uh, let's say, uh, 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 sitting time, you know, for certain papers, mm -hmm. or we may, not, uh, we may not require the child to take a listening test, you know, if, he, if his listening ability has become worse, you know. So it, it, it makes sense to submit the latest report to us. Uh, yeah? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. Uh, one more question. Um, because of the fact that now in, for the May-June paper, um, obviously children who are in international schools, they don't have the problem of submitting their documentation, their grading, etc. What about places, for example, like the British Council who have only private candidates registered? or students who are in home schools or in learning centers and have registered in international schools. What happens to all these children? Where, where do they go now? Good, good question, yeah. Uh, Noni, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I can add on to what the question that uh, Marie raises now, yeah. Another, another drawback of a private candidate yeah. When when we have to cancel this major exam, uh, and you have to depend on evidence-based grades, you know, for the school to give you predicted grades, mm -hmm. that's where a student who's registered with a center like British Council will have a disadvantage because they cannot give you the grade, they cannot verify, they don't know the learning center, they don't know how you are learning. So that is another disadvantage that has cropped up because of this COVID nineteen situation. Mm -hmm. So if I can, if I can, can, can give, you know, advice without any, uh, what you call, uh, not to say any discredit to British Council, it would make more sense if you can register with an international school as a private candidate who can help to give you a predicted grade, who can, who, who, who is confident that you are teaching the student in, in, a, in the right manner, who can even drop in to see how you conduct the lesson, and then view your assessment so that that school is able to help to give you a predicted grade. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. so that, 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 that will be my advice. Yeah. As far as possible. These are unusual times. Yeah. But you still have to think ahead. Now. You have to have yes. a contingency, contingency plan. Yeah. So that will be, that will be my advice. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yep. thank you very much. Um, do I have any more questions that I have missed? Is there anyone who is here on this platform who hasn't had their answer, hasn't had their question answered? Um, I have one here, but I think basically... I hope the last one. Uh, anyone with a... With a yeah, okay, there is another question oh. that's just come in, I think. Um, uh, yes, I can answer. The question is yes, Mr. Jonathan. <laughs> With the Malay language paper 0546 IGCSE exam that was supposed to be held in May, June this year, will it be held in October, November? And the answer is yes. Right, yeah. Uh, anything else? I think got one more. Uh, okay, uh, because like this year, many international schools, uh, they are starting not to accept private candidates already. So uh, a few schools that we know previously they do take in and now they do not take in. So, uh, so and as mentioned by MOE previously last year in the month of September, they actually mentioned verbally without any uh, hard copy. Yeah. So stated that uh, as an international school, we can't accept private candidate. So any validation to that? Yes. Is that, yeah, anything that's progressed from there? 
Yeah, Marie, don't. This is an unofficial reply. Yeah, please don't quote me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not speaking on behalf of private education division. Yeah, but we work very closely together so that, that to ensure minimal disruption. Yeah, to private learning centers and in the best interest of private candidates. Yeah, so they have put in a, a study over the past one, two, three years. Yeah, so it's only fair that we allow them to see the exams. I have been had quite a number of meetings with uh, very supportive colleagues, collaborative colleagues at the private education division. Yeah? So, but what I want to say is that just to, just to uh, 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 confirm what you said just now, in September last year, at a briefing for international schools in the school in Shah Alam, the private education division informed us a directive. Yeah? Uh, the international schools, the they told the international schools that they will not be allowed to accept private candidates anymore. Mm. So that, that, that is a directive here. Yeah? But there has got, since then, there has, got, there has not been any official communication or letter or formal letter in black and white that has gone out to all the international schools as to when this directive will be officially implemented. implemented. Yeah. And then we have been, we have been uh, the, the, the fear of us, we have been having meetings. So we have uh, uh, kind of like implore upon the private education division for them to be considerate, to give a, 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 a grace a, period, a, a, grace period, a, a yes. realistic and, and a practical grace period, yeah, for private and the candidates to, 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 to sit exam in, 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 in in the, what do you call uh, the, the next few months, uh, you know, yeah. so that yeah. let them complete. Uh, yeah, so and I think uh, the private education people, yeah, they, I mean, we, we they listen, I think, uh, yeah. probably speaking, they're compassionate, and then uh, mm -hmm. we, we try to work this out so that there will be minimal disruption, yeah, and minimal, uh, I would say, uh, inconvenience mm. to private candidates. Uh. But it is something that international schools and private candidates have to start thinking seriously. Yeah? The private learning centers, you know, uh, do if you want to think of uh, long term uh, 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 business planning, business growth, you know, do try to apply for, uh, for, for, for an international school license. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The private education division has scaled down a lot of the requirements. Yeah? Of course, uh, uh, Marie, you know, you have more competition that way, but still. You know, you can't stop competitors. Yeah? Fair competition. So, <laughs> are there fair competition? Yeah, fair competition. Friendly competition. Yes? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I hope I answered that question. Yeah. Uh, Marie. Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 will, we will start to wind down, but we will allow any, anyone who has uh, three more questions, we will take. I have one question here which has been brought up that this has not been answered, but um, I would like to comment on it after I read it. My sons are Malaysians, but they have been studying in Shanghai. Thus, they do not have any Bahasa proficiency. How can the school support them in learning Bahasa? <coughs> uh, this is from Patricia Jade Ui. Um, I believe that is a question more for the school, like we who are hosting it. So it is not for Mr. Ng to answer this question because he will then say, well, the school that, she, that you decide to register your children in will be the ones to support this um, this necessity that they require. So, Miss Patricia, if you get in touch with us, we will be able to uh, help you out there. Uh, now to go on, yes, that's right. You, you just get in touch with us and we can give you some more information on that. Uh, how do you check whether a home school has an international school license? This is from, uh, oh, anonymous, from a Huawei phone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. No home school in Malaysia has an international school exactly. license. <laughs> Bottom line. I hope I answered yeah. the question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you have an international school license, you won't call yourself a home school. Correct. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you just have to go to a school and if you see the, the certification that Cambridge has approved it, that means you know that we've gone through the, rigor, the rigors of being approved, making sure that everything is there ready for the children to and for exams to take place. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So two more questions. Uh, I don't is see there, all. Yeah. Yeah. Miss Marie, can you yeah, see anything else? Yeah. Uh, Miss Elizabeth, uh, is there a Cambridge training and certification or accreditation mean for private tutors? One 
this is one question. Another one is one which is simpler than the one mean school teachers. One man school teachers. I will, I will answer the first question after I read out the second question. Yeah, Barry. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> the first question, we do allow private tutors, teachers from non-registered Cambridge school to also attend our training. Yeah. So I've often, uh, even though some centers are not regist registered with us, but to me, to us, the interest of the student is always at the top of our priority. Mm. So we, we, we will look at whether your center is a, 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 a approved center or a private center, you know. But if you are teaching our curriculum, if there are still places available in our training sessions, we allow you to come and join the face-to-face -face training so that you can, you'll be better, better trained, better qualified, yeah, to support your students. So that is the, the first question. Yes. So the answer, we do allow private tutors to come and join our training sessions. Yeah? Okay, what's the second question, Marie? Uh, can I just add that even if they are teaching, then they can actually sign up for the CIDTL because you have to be teaching somewhere in order to do this course, which will then give you the, the qualification. And there are a few places that do conduct this course yeah, in, okay. in KL, yes? Yeah, that is for the CIDTL, but also we have the two-day face-to-face uh, uh, -face subject uh, yes. training, yeah? Mm. And we also, have, we also have what they call enrichment courses as well, mm -hmm. where you just do, you know, teaching of sciences for secondary, you know, you, you are so welcome to join, yeah? So uh, we have a few, uh, uh, what they call training programs, yeah? Okay, okay what's the second the question, Marie? The second one from Elizabeth, one which is simpler than the one man school teaches. I don't know. Uh, how, how, the, how you decipher that? Uh, what do you mean by simpler? Uh, one know? man school. Elizabeth, do you can can we unmute Elizabeth? Or she can she can actually type up if she wants to clarify that. Ah, oh, can you? already her. unmuted. Ah yes. Hi, uh, Elizabeth here. Yeah? Hi. Can you can you can you elaborate a bit more about your second question about one man and two women? <laughs> Uh, it's actually uh, related to the first questions. It's more, uh, you have the, uh, the CIDTL thing, which is meant for school teachers, and that requires a lot more uh, in terms of time and, I guess, uh, resources, investment. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just thinking from parents' perspective, and a lot of parents send their kids to private tutors to help out uh, support in terms of, you know, preparation for IGCSEs, and from parents' perspective, how would you know which teachers are, which tutors, so we're talking about external tutors, which external tutors are familiar and qualified to tutor the IGCs, oh. the CSE subjects. And such training then would probably not require uh, that intensive of a training because these tutors may not have the means in terms of times and also financial uh, uh, means to pay for the extensive uh, uh, teaching and learning that yeah thank okay. you okay uh, elizabeth thanks a lot for for further clar clarifying that question yeah? uh, uh, it's good that see when we talk about uh, the teaching qualifications yeah getting a a a, a, a formal uh, teaching qualification like like our cdtl or cdtt that's not cdtl so also we have a certificate level, Cambridge International Certificate in Teaching and Learning. We also have a diploma level currently. But just to share with you, we have gone down one level lower than certificate. And we call it the award level. Yeah, we should take uh, maybe like three months shorter than the certificate level. And currently, we have a provider who have, we have approved in Malaysia to, to, to offer this uh, Cambridge, we call it the Cambridge uh, International Award in Teaching and Learning, yeah. So it's CIA TL, yeah. And the the uh, the school that we have uh, uh, gone into an agreement with is actually Help University, yeah, because they they do it so through Help International School. So they have they offer this uh, CIA TL. So do check with Help Help University 
they are, they are teaching faculty, faculty of education, and it requires, as you mentioned just now, less resources. You know, you don't have to do so long. And it's also good, let's say, if you, you are a, 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 a fresh graduate, yeah? and you, 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 you apply uh, to your, your teaching as an, a teaching assistant. You're not sure whether you may, you may or may not like teaching. Yeah? So what you can do, in order to, 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 to improve yourself, to have better pedagogical uh, uh, exposure or, or knowledge, you enroll in a program like the CIATL. Yeah? So do check it out with uh, uh, the Help University. Currently, they are the only, they are the, the only uh, institution that we have approved for Malaysia. I hope I answered your question, uh, Elizabeth. Yeah. And I think Ms. Evelyn will have the last question. I can't see anything beyond this. Uh, what about students who are studying in missionary or church-based centers? Huh. So we have yes. we have a lot of we have quite a number of uh, they are all they are all classified what uh, what what I would class uh, uh, say private learning centers yes yeah so private learning centers you can be uh, church based you can be you you can be privately based you can be home based you can be you know and they are not there are private learning centers which are not only churches they are also private learning centers uh, they are also private learning centers. Uh, which also uh, offer Islamic education, yeah. you know. So there are also private learning centers that offer uh, uh, other religions, and some are not are not really relig uh, 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 religion based, uh, but they are classified, categorized as private learning center. Yeah. Mm. So so and, and and they under the private private education act 1996-97, there's no category for such for such a for such a school. Yeah. yeah. So the the private education division is giving advice, is asking these schools here yeah, to apply for a proper school license. Yeah? So that's my advice here. Yeah, I hope I answered the question. Okay. All right. And okay, last one. One, aha. Okay, this is a very interesting question, Mr. Ng. Some colleges only require three credits, IGCSE. I know a few. <laughs> is that okay for the students who just take only three subjects to meet this minimum qualification? If you come across these colleges who accept only three credits, please report to the private education division. Ah. They are just they are just flouting the law, yeah. They are going against the law. Yeah? Oh. So the law is the law, yeah. So I use the word the Ministry of Education. We have to follow one of the Five principles of Rukun Dangkara, yeah, these few days, yeah, is the Daulatan Undang Undang. Okay, but even the for a diploma, laws, even yeah. for just a diploma course? Unless, unless it is, is, is what they call an exception has been made for certain diploma courses, for certain pre U courses. Okay. Some of the, some of the, the, the uh, pre U programs, yeah, are run under the Ministry of Human Resources, yeah. So their requirement could be a bit different, yeah, but in the, the, the private education division, Ministry of Higher Education, yes. uh, the requirement is five, five credits and oh. C and above, and also uh, the credit in English and Maths. Ah, so yes. whether you like it or not, you do English and Maths. Yeah? So that that is uh, uh, what they call, um, that is not allowed. Yeah? Actually, they're not, not, not to say they're not complying with uh, M MOE or MOHE's uh, regulation. Yeah? Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Yeah. okay, wow, that has been a really, really insightful afternoon, Mr. Ng. I think you have yeah. managed to answer everyone's queries, questions, etc. And, um, and Ms. Mary, would you, Ms. Marie, would you like to conclude? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Ng, for coming. Really, really appreciate it and actually yeah. exceeded the time. So when yeah. you tell me that you want around uh, 20 minutes to do slide and, and half an hour to QA, eventually yeah. exceeded now it's like one and one hour plus. You know? <laughs> thank you very much you for very your much. time. Most, most welcome, yeah. I just say thank you to everyone. Yeah. I, I hope you have you have you have, you have uh, enjoyed the session. Thank you, Marie. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, bye bye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank you.
Okay, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for staying with us. I know we've overshot the one hour, but I think, uh, well, we could have gone on for longer, <laughs> but we must let Mr. Ng take his leave. Um, if you have any other questions, you can always contact Pine Hills International. We can direct the questions to Mr. Ng, or if you have specific questions, as one of our viewers said about the um, Bahasa Malaysia um, uh, assistance, uh, we will be able to help you there as well. So if there are no other questions, uh, have a good weekend and look out for more webinars that we hope will interest you. Tomorrow at 10 o'clock, there is a very interesting one that is done by Dr. Rain. Dr. Rain is uh, presenting, yes, tomorrow. Um, She's talking about uh, be remaining positive, um, positive attitude in hard times. Um, she's not located in Malaysia, if I'm not mistaken. She's located in Canada. I'm yeah. Yes, Canada. Yes. So yeah. she's she's agreed to give us the time at ten o'clock, which is in her evening. She she is very interested. She is very good. I I've I've listened to one of her talks. She's got a lot to share. And uh, yes, please do join us tomorrow. Looking forward to seeing you again. Thank you very much, and have a good evening. That's PHIS signing off for now. Bye bye. Right.